Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder and in this video I will show you how to add weapon recoil to your characters and your weapons. Um, so the recoil system has got both muzzle climb and these repeating recoil patterns which can be counterbalanced uh, by pulling the mouse cursor down. Um, there's also a camera shake and there's uh, weapon recoil animations. Um, you can see the, the shoulder on the character sort of kicking back here. And both the, uh, the pistol and the assault rifle, uh, they're created uh, using the exact same system. Um, they've got slightly different animations, but uh, the rest of it is just different parameters into the system. Okay, cool, so uh, let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, the uh, switching weapons using the multi-parent constraint. So in the scene here, I've got a character, and uh, when I shoot, there's, there's no uh, recoil animations happening. Um, so I want to make it so the crosshair basically drifts up the center of the screen as I hold the uh, hold the fire button down and to do that I'm going to use um, Cine Machine to modify these uh, these values these axis control values that have been fed into Cine Machine uh, the Cine Machine free look component that exists on the uh, the character so this uh, Y axis that will be our vertical recoil and the X axis will be the horizontal recoil um, and we'll just modify these values in, in code um, so to do that, i just start by getting a reference to the uh, Cine Machine free look camera. So inside the active weapon script, um, we will get uh, create a new property called Cine Machine free look, and I'm just going to call it player camera, um, and can assign that in the inspector, just like that. And now we want to basically assign this to the weapons at runtime. Um, so just create a new script called weapon recoil on the uh, weapon prefab. I'm just going to use the assault to start with. And this also needs a reference to the camera, except uh, this one will be assigned uh, dynamically. So I'm just going to use the hide and inspector uh, attribute just to make it clear that it shouldn't be assigned in the editor. And also the Raycast weapon script needs a reference to the, uh, the weapon recoil scripts on the same game objects uh, just because we'll call into that each time we fire a bullet so just use uh, get component because it's on the same game object should be fine um, weapon recoil and now um, inside active weapon when we equip the weapon we just want to do the same thing that we're doing with the crosshair target and just do like weapon recoil dot player camera equals player camera cool so yeah, now we've got the weapon recoil script hooked up and this has been assigned as we equip a weapon um, can create a new function called generate recoil and this will be modifying the access position of the camera um, so we just need to call that uh, inside like fire bullet from the weapon so each time we fire a bullet we just want to call generate recoil and then finally we just need like a new uh, public float property called like vertical recoil and this will be how much to actually modify that axis by so you can just do play camera dot y axis dot value uh, minus equals for going up the screen vertical recoil and the last thing is actually just assign a vertical recoil amount inside the, um, the prefab here so if I just set that to one I'll show you how that looks Cool. So um, yeah, the the recoil amount is still like it's huge. Um, so if I just uh, modify that, just reduce it slightly uh, to like 0 0.01. Yeah, it looks better. Um, except it's still uh, quite stuttery. Like um, pretty much. Yeah, just want to like smooth that over multiple frames. So rather than calling, rather than modifying the axis value each time we generate a bullet, we're just going to start a timer and then uh, modify it over multiple frames instead. So just create a new um, property called duration and this will be like how long each uh, each recoil sort of hit will, will take. Um, and then create another property called time and we just set that duration, just reset the timer to the duration each time we fire a bullet and then inside update just check if there is time left then subtract uh, the vertical recoil amount and um, then we just yeah subtract time.delta time from the timer uh, and the last thing because we're doing this over multiple frames we now need to just multiply that by delta time cool so this 
Oh, I need to just set a duration now. So if I just set it to like one second, yeah, you can see it takes now like a second to uh, to travel up the screen. Um, but there is still like an annoying problem. Like if I set this to like 0 0.1, for example, notice the distance it travels. It's like traveling basically just over a square. Um, and if I change the duration now to like 0 0.1, if I want it to go much faster, see how it doesn't travel the same distance anymore? It makes it really hard to tune because now if I change the duration, I have to counterbalance the vertical recoil, which is annoying. So to fix that, um, we can just divide this amount here by the, the duration. And it's not gonna be exact um, because there might be some leftover time and stuff like that. Um, but it will make it much easier to tune. Um, so you, now you can see it's traveling about uh, just over a square. Um, and if I change the duration to one, it travels pretty much the same amount, which just makes it like so much easier to tune. Um, now I can just reduce this vertical recoil amount to like 0 0.01, for example, um, and reduce the duration down to like 0 0.1. Yeah, and now that's looking it's looking much smoother. The last thing is actually, um, I just don't quite like working in values like this, 0 0.01. It's a little bit awkward to type. So rather than doing it there, I'm just gonna divide this vertical recoil amount um, by say like a thousand. And that way I can use sort of more integer kind of units. Um, it's a minor thing, but <laughs> yeah, it just means so like if I type one, it's now moving like a really small amount. If I type 10, yeah, it's moving kind of reasonable amount. Cool, um, so the last thing is when I stop firing, the um, the cursor just it just stops straight away. So I actually wanna have some kind of, I guess, recoil uh, where the cursor kind of goes up and then comes back down. And to do that, I'm gonna use the uh, Cine Machine Impulse extension. But first, just make sure to um, uh, set any properties that you changed in the, the scene if you're changing it like I was onto the actual prefab itself um, cool so now if you go to sorry uh, cinema machine free look camera and then scroll down to add extension and just add a cinema machine impulse listener so this listener thing um, will just allow cinema machine to receive impulse events and impulse events are generated from a cinema machine impulse source component so just add one of them to the weapon prefab and it needs a signal shape um, so you can create one in the asset menu under Cine Machine noise settings and uh, lastly just assign that asset to Cine Machine impulse source. Um, so we need to actually generate impulse events uh, from the recoil script every time we fire, oh, um, fire a bullet. So we just need to get a reference to this, uh, this component here. So inside weapon recoil, uh, just create a new property, uh, hide an inspector again, cause we'll get it inside a wake and cinema machine dot cinema machine impulse source camera shake like that. And <clears throat> uh, just inside a wake, uh, you can just get camera shake the usual way, uh, impulse source, and every time we generate recoil, we also just want to call camera shake dot generate impulse. Um, and this needs a velocity, so it should be relative to the camera in our case. So just use camera dot main dot transform dot forward. Cool. Um, so if we have a look at the asset, uh, there's a ton of properties on here. You can basically change the rotation or the position of the camera. Um, all of it is just set to zero right now, so nothing happens. Um, so yeah, if I shoot, basically it's just doing exactly what it was before. But now if I, um, just for example, if I change the Z rotation of the camera, so something crazy like 90, you can see the camera like twists. And if I change the frequency to like 10, then it will actually twist <laughs> both ways, make you feel like super drunk. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna clear that one. The one I actually wanna use is rotation X. Um, so if I set like minus 20, you can see it's now rotating about the X axis of the character and uh, the crosshair actually pulls back down as well quite nicely, which yeah, looks pretty cool. The other one that you can change is like the, um, the position of the camera. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. So if I did 20, you can make it like zoom out. Um, maybe you want to have it like minus one or something. You know, so when you're shooting, it, the camera like pulls in a bit. Yeah, you can play with this stuff all day long. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically the basic idea. So you can 
change the uh, the camera settings for your recoil using this noise settings, and then change the actual crosshair recoil uh, using using these properties here on the weapon recoil script. So it's quite a nice distinction between how the crosshair sort of moves and how the camera is affected, rather than trying to mash it all together. I think it's quite good to separate these concepts out. Um, cool. So the next step is just going to be adding like uh, some horizontal recoil and just getting those uh, those like recoil patterns in. Um, so you can set that up pretty much in the same way that we did the vertical recoil. Um, so just create a new property here called horizontal recoil, and then yeah, rather than modifying the y-axis, we'll just uh, modify the x-axis here and use the horizontal recoil uh, parameter here. Um, so the units are a little bit different for horizontal. You only need to divide by 10 to make them in roughly the same range. So now just on the, uh, the prefab itself, uh, just set up like a horizontal value. So I'm just gonna set that to the same as the vertical 10 and it should go up in roughly 45 degrees to the, to the left, which yeah, um, so that's cool, except you kind of want it to actually go back and forth. So you could, you know, randomly generate a value between positive and negative of this, but instead I'm going to use um, a vector2 array called recoil pattern, and then um, it's easier to explain if I show you in the editor what, what I'm talking about. So rather than having just one vertical and recoil sample, I'm going to create like multiple of these and then basically specify the horizontal and recoil values for each uh, each time we fire a bullet and then basically index this array and increase the uh, the index each time we fire a bullet um, so to create like a S pattern you know you would start going to the left then a little bit less then a little bit less then uh, you know less some more and let me just finish uh, filling this out really quickly And uh, for the Y value, I'll just keep that the same the whole way down. So now just inside the um, weapon recoil script, we just want to uh, sample this array. So um, yeah, actually one thing I forgot to mention is the vertical recoil horizontal. These are now redundant, so they can, uh, they can be made uh, basically private here. And we'll just initialize these values. Um, Every time we we generate a recoil, we'll sample this uh, this index here, this array here, using our index. So the horizontal uh, recoil will be the recoil pattern at that index uh, with the x value, and then for the vertical recoil, use the y value. And now we just need to increase the the index, um, but I want it to wrap around when it gets to the end of the array the end of the array so let's create a new function called like get or like next index uh, index and then you could um you could just randomly sample this array as well that would be quite could make it quite interesting but in my case <clears throat> I'm just gonna go like index plus one and then um, wrap it around using mod recoil pattern dot length cool and then here we just do index equals next index passing in the current index. And yeah, none of this code needs to change because we now just initialize these values out of this array. And yeah, so with any luck, this should look like, um, like an S pattern. Nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. The one thing is, um, I actually want to reset the uh, where the index sort of begins from every time I start firing. Uh, so I'm just going to add a new function in here, like um, public void reset, and then just set the index equals to zero. And inside Raycast weapon, um, inside start firing, just call like recoil dot reset. And that just means we always start from the beginning of that that pattern every time we we start shooting. You could also do things like decay the index over time when you um, when you stop shooting. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there's tons of different ways you could you could do this. Um, cool. So I think the final thing. Let me just check all this is still working. Um, the final thing is now just adding like 
some animations to the character. So I just want to add like some actual animated like recoil on the character to move the um, this weapon back and forth. So I'm going to create uh, some new constraints. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, animate the uh, body of the character. So I'm going to call this uh, body recoil. And to do that, I'm going to use a new component called the override transform component. And for the constrained objects, just assign spine two, and then assign this body recoil as the source object. So what's it, what this lets us do is basically add on some transform values to um, like some position and rotation to this uh, spine node. It basically uh, modifies the, the pivot position of, um, of this bone here. Uh, so if I go into play mode, I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so if I modify the Y position of this body recoil, it now um, it modifies the, the spine position of the character, um, which is yeah pretty cool. And it's all relative to what the character is doing. Um, so if I look at all the aim stuff is still working, and now this has been applied kind of afterwards, and if I zero um, zero everything out, then it's just it does everything kind of like as though it had no effect. Um, except there is one kind of issue, like if I uh, turn the character right around, it's now like looking at me, um, and I want the head to just always be looking forward. So um, this aim head constraint just should come after the body recoil. And now if I go into play mode and modify the Y position, the head actually stays in place. Um, yeah, if you go to the extremes, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, just don't do that. <laughs> Um, and the last thing is actually just uh, modifying the weapon holder position. So currently this holder position is actually um, it's being keyed in uh, somewhere here. Um, the weapon on the multi-position constraint is being keyed to the, uh, what's well, been uh, bound to the clavicle R joint. So just create a new constraint afterwards called uh, like weapon recoil. And again, I'll use the override transform to modify the holder position uh, using this uh, weapon recoil object. And all the values here will be relative to whatever is happening in the weapon holder um, game object. <laughs> so let me just show you. Uh, in the scene, now I can uh, modify this, this recoil thing here. Um, and that lets me modify the, uh, the pivot position and like if I aim this way up, for example, every like all the aiming layer and stuff, everything is still working as it as it was before. But now there's just like a relative kind of animation that's played over the top, which uh, I think is pretty useful for uh, recoil kind of stuff. And yeah, if you zero everything out, then everything just works uh, sort of as it was before. So yeah, now it's time to just uh, keyframe that stuff into the rig controller. Select the rig layers game object and just open up the rig controller and um, we're going to create a new uh, layer here called recoil layer and this will be responsible for playing our recoil animations. Um, just make sure the weight is set to, to 1 and just need like an empty state basically um, which won't play any animation and we'll just return to the state after we finish uh, playing our recoil animation and uh, yeah so I just actually need to create some animations so if I call this like uh, Actually, yeah, weapon underscore recoil underscore rifle, and just drag that in. So I want to create a transition when the animation finishes playing. So just set have exit time to true, and I'll just set the durations to zero because I don't want any blending going back to this empty state. Um, and I'll create another animation for the uh, pistol as well, just because that will have a slightly different look. Um, so we want separate animations for that. And yeah, again, just set the exit time durations to zero. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's it for the animator. So if you just close that out, then uh, inside the, we can go back to the code. Uh, inside the weapon recoil script, we now need a reference to the rig controller. Um, so just create a new property. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this uh, animator and call this like rig controller. And this will be assigned in the same way these properties were assigned. Uh, from the active weapon script. So that'll just be weapon.recoil.rigcontroller equals rig controller. And um, yeah, each time we generate a recoil, we just now want to play one of those animation states directly. So I think it was called weapon underscore recoil underscore. Uh, and now we need the, the name of the, um, <clears throat> the actual weapon. So 
just uh, pass that through from the Raycast weapon script when we call generate recoil you can uh, pass the weapon name through and just use that to um, create a string for the uh, the name of the, the animation state and the second parameter is actually the layer which was layer one for the recoil layer and paths in zero for the normalized time um, that way it'll start playing the animation from the from the beginning every time cool uh, so now it's just time to actually start animating so if i just grab a weapon to to animate and go to the scene view <laughs> um, and yeah just go to the rig layers and um, then open up the animation window uh, animation dock that at the bottom here and just select the weapon recoil rifle um, so the first thing I'll do is just move the crosshair kind of like to 0 0.3 um, crosshair cur cursor whatever it's called um, and then hit record and I will animate the um, body recoil so probably just like a subtle effect I think is better I'm not going to spend too much time in this video because I don't want to waste your time uh, figuring out properties for these um, but this is just the general idea right uh, you could also set this to like minus four to bring the gun up a little bit um, also bring it back a little bit something like that yeah and then um, just reset everything at the end of the animation I'll just leave it at that for now because uh, you can toy around with this stuff in your own time um, but that gives a pretty kind of okay looking animation to start with um, it's quite slow at the moment so I'm just going to go back into the rig controller select the rifle animation and just speed it up by like six times um, and if we go back into play um, let's close this animation window now and open this guy up yeah you can now see uh, the, the gun is sort of recoiling up a little bit and the shoulder is sort of kicking back um, the screen shake is, is quite dramatic so it's a little bit hard to see but you can tune all that stuff uh, in your own time but yeah this is how it looks in the scene view so yeah we've got a character and if I shoot up all of the animations are the relative to where the camera is looking um, cool so now the last step is just setting up the, the pistol which is going to be set up a little bit differently um, so yeah just select the pistol prefab and we just need to add those two scripts that we added to the assault uh, the assault prefab so that's weapon recoil and the impulse uh, cine machine impulse source um, so for the impulse source just select the noise settings that we're using for now um, you could create like custom noise settings for the for the pistol I'm just going to zero out the sustain time as well um, I think it's kind of a good value to set to zero when you're working with recoil um, and then for the recoil pattern um, so I don't want to have that crazy S shape that I was using for the assault rifle so I'm just going to have a single entry um, with zero zero and this just means that there's going to be no horizontal or vertical re uh, recoil on the crosshair position of the pistol um, so if I go into play mode I can show you what that looks like now when I shoot basically the um, the crosshair kind of goes up and falls back down quickly and that is uh, due to the cine machine impulse source um, but the recoil that's all just zeroed out so it doesn't it doesn't climb up the screen like you know in that crazy shape like we had for the uh for the assault rifle um yeah which i think just makes a lot of sense for the uh the pistol it's yeah basically uh <laughs> just how i want it um and the last bit is just making it look cool so inside the animation uh, for the pistol just select the rig layers and yeah select the weapon recoil uh, pistol i'll set the cursor to 0 0.3 and inside the scene view just going to do something a little bit different um, first of all set the body position to 10 just pretty similar to what we were doing for the assault and the um the recoil position itself I'm going to give it a kind of more unique look for the for the pistol where the gun goes up beside uh, the character's head I think it looks quite cool um, and yeah just sort of bring that forward a little bit yeah something like that um, it's probably also worth just keyframing out the uh, the left hand hint node so the elbow doesn't kind of flop around all over the show yeah I mean, that looks that looks pretty cool um, 
and yeah just again at the end of the animation um, just zero everything back out to make it go back to where it was cool so phew, it looks that looks awesome <laughs> for like a 10 second animation <laughs> and I think yeah there's just one more thing um, if I just play that animation at normal speed it's quite slow so just need to speed that up um, go into the rig controller select the recoil and I'll just set the speed to three here and what what is left I guess just checking it out in the scene so if I grab a pistol I really need some proper sound effects man yeah this looks uh, I'm really happy with this so the assault rifle has got this uh, recoil pattern which you can like counterbalance by pulling the mouse down if you're any good at it and then uh, the pistol that uh, this acts much more like a pistol which is pretty cool so yeah I mean that's the that's the end of this tutorial uh, so hopefully you have learned something from it um, and yeah there's tons of different parameters to play with to get your weapons feeling the way that you want so just to kind of recap on the prefab you've got the weapon recoil script where you can control the uh, recoil pattern plus the duration between each of these shots um, you've also got cine machine impulse source which you can use to control all of the camera shake that goes along with the uh, with the recoil and then inside the rig controller um, underneath the rig layer you've got these animation states which are getting played and you can set whatever keyframes you like inside those those animations um, using the body recoil and the weapon recoil nodes cool yeah so if uh, if you've enjoyed this video um, just yeah like and subscribe and share it with your friends and all that and yeah i'll be back with more videos so stay tuned Kakite.